Oh my god, I've re-recorded an intro. This is new for Spookier Celluloid. Welcome back. It's Bigfoot Mondays again. No, this won't be an actual series. I just really like Bigfoot movies, which are kind of like the opposite of shark movies, where yes, a lot of them are bad, but I still like them a lot. Way more than shark movies. I don't know. There's just something, especially these older 70s, uh, Bigfoot movies that are clearly just regional American horror films about some goddamn rednecks hunting down Bigfoot that I love. And this one's no exception. It's not an amazing movie. It's not the best Bigfoot movie ever made. Uh, I think that title still holds to, uh, to Night of the Demon. Uh, <laughs> there are different types of movies. This one plays itself slightly more seriously. There is still some comedy and some bits of uh, comic relief because let's be honest, this is still a Bigfoot film. It, uh, you really have to be a great filmmaker to make those uh, serious all the way. However, this one is probably the best made that I've seen and it's definitely one of the most effective Bigfoot movie in the department of scares because due to the direction and more specifically the cinematography that is made by Dean Cundy of Halloween and Jurassic Park fame this one is actually pretty well shot in fact it's incredible and the way it's shot does create some tension which is not present in let's say lower budgeted cheaper uh, Bigfoot films of the time it's really surprisingly great and especially because this is the synapse release the transfer is beautiful I saw Dean Cundy in the credits and it explained everything because this is very Cundy-esque uh, from the anamorphic widescreen which looks beautiful uh, the way it's lit the indoor scene the outdoor scene the colors are vibrant it just looks very good it almost looks like new in some way um, it pops it's beautiful it's really great to look at the saturation the contrast it's a, as a you'd expect from synapse it it looks incredible the transfer that is uh, the film itself is about two college students from chicago university on their way well they're two anthropology students and they have a lesson on bigfoot and the po probability of bigfoot actually existing these two students are really into it they kind of believe slash don't believe they say that they'd believe if they see it, so they decide to go on an excursion in the swamps of Louisiana, which, again, is such an amazing setting for this type of film. Uh, I really do love horror films that are in Louisiana. I can think of The Beyond, which is one of my favorite movies of all time, and even though I like them less, but like the Victor Crowley movies, the Hatchet movies, I just love Louisiana as a backdrop for a horror film, especially one like this about folklore and legend. It just fits perfectly, and it adds to the uh, to the aesthetic of swampy hotness. This one's directed by. Joy Huck Jr., which I was not really familiar with until I looked on IMDb after rating this film and I saw that he, he uh, directed or worked on a Clint Eastwood police film from the 70s, which is surprising because this feels very regional, but at the same time, this looks and feels very good. The acting is pretty good. Uh, we got your typical uh, redneck characters, and this is what I love about these types of films is that the characters feel weir uh, real. They are character actors for the most part, just acting uh, and doing a great job. Uh, basically, they're real rednecks portraying rednecks, all, although they might not be, but this is how the movie feels. And this is what separates a lot of these older kind of exploitation horror films, kind of like The Town That Dreaded Sundown, from New York films where it's just these really Hollywood types without any character and but back in the days you had character actor who had 
the characters and they had the chops to act like these you know southern redneck types if that makes any sense overall i really enjoyed this one um it has scares it, it's it's pg so it lacks in a lot of the things you'd expect from 70s exploitation film the, the films there is no real nudity there's sexual undertones but it doesn't go really anywhere and it's not really heavy in the department of blood and guts uh it's pretty tame but what it delivers on is atmosphere and uh, tension and uh, the music is really good the acting is pretty good as i said the cinematography is incredible overall it's just a really good film it's not great i feel like um it stalls and it's kind of cliche at points uh it's the type of film you've seen before you know there's this sheriff from this town and the town folks don't really want to talk about the bigfoot or the creature as they call it uh, you know the town secret but then these outsiders come in the town start stirring up some shit and eventually they discover that yep the creature is real and it's just not just a town legend and then you have the sheriff who tries to put the kibosh on their studies so like you've seen this film before and you, you you've seen it before so don't expect anything new don't expect nothing super amazing it's just a very well executed 70s little horror film that delivers in uh, in 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 atmosphere yeah i like this one uh i'll give it a 7.25 out of 10 yeah if i honestly if you can pick this up for cheap i don't know if there's still some synapse cells going on I'd say pick it up just because a synapse does an amazing amazing job with transfers and as I said this looks fucking like brand new uh probably better than it did when it played in the theaters honestly uh this is an amazing transfer and second of all if you like these creature feature uh regional horror kind of redneck exploitation mixed with horror as i as i do as you know some of you might know that the town that dreaded sundown is one of my favorite films uh this is highly recommended so yeah check it out creature from black lake see ya <laughs>